Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome back to Don't Escape, 4 Days to Survive. Previously, we beat the game for the first time. Now we're going back for the Awakening Mode to get the true ending. Wake up, David. You have to wake up. You have to escape. No! The game's called Don't Escape. Alright, we'll escape. So, how this playthrough is going to go down is rather than showing each day and like having basically this being a, a 10 episode plus series, we're going to kind of skip through to maybe new dialogues, new sections, and kind of brief clips of maybe what challenges I'm facing, but you won't see the, the gritty survival aspects because I'm assuming basically all the items I saw were there for the other types of survival for the most part. So, there's probably going to be very similar aspects that happen, but you probably just like install things in different spots and so on. So we'll be skipping almost all of that. Very abbreviated playthrough. So anyway, what do we deal with the first day this time? Nice window. Oh god, it's... What a nightmare. It all felt so real. It smelled real, too. I feel there was something more in that dream. Something sad and important. Why did I feel like this already happened? Yet something is different. I'm gonna find out what. Nothing going on. So let's go through here. This cloud. It's green. I think my nightmare might have been more than just a dream. I still have a couple of hours, but I have to find a shelter. Fast. Anything new here? Let's see. I think the moon, what's left of it, is getting bigger every day. I had a weird dream last night. It felt so real. There was this gas, corrosive, burning. I could feel the skin and meat coming off my bones. This morning I saw a dark green cloud on the horizon headed this way. I have to find a place to hide. Weather drone. That's new. It's an automated drone used to measure weather conditions. Measure the toxic gas full made drone. That gets too damaged to ever fly again. There's still something on its display. It's a new weather anomaly. Okay. Interesting. Okay, this time we're gonna get this plastic wrap. Oh god, those corpses are burned in a really nasty way. The toxic cloud got them. It looks like they were wearing hazmat suits. But the chemicals were too strong. It's not easy being green. The suit has been destroyed by incredibly strong chemicals and is no use to me. Maybe the gas mask. The gas mask is broken, but I managed to salvage an air filter. There's a small leaflet in one of the pouches in the suit. Attention citizens! As of today, 1996... Oh, 1111! Civil defense as an organization is being disbanded. Evacuate the area to protect yourself on your own from now on. This region has been affected by a highly toxic gas cloud. If you're unable and unwilling to evacuate, take cover indoors. Hide on the upper floor if the contaminant gas density is higher than the normal air density. Otherwise, hide on the ground floor. Air density is around 1.61 kilograms and 3. God have mercy on us all. So it says... They cover indoors. Hide in the upper floor of the contaminant gas density is higher than normal air density. Otherwise, hide on the ground floor. I don't want to take this piece of paper since it's highly contained with gas. But I've known what's important in my journal. Let's hope it will be more useful to me than it was to them. Hazmat suit. Nice. Golden Freeman! Chemistry flask. Sticky note. Jeff, you're new, new on the team, but I think you'll do just fine. Despite what our boss says, always remember to check the page file of the toxin you're trying to neutralize. Mix two of our emergency response components and dissolve the resulting solution in a large amount of water. 
Okay. A plus C. Okay, that should be good. Upon closer inspection, the suit turns out to have a big hole, so the gas mask seems to be faulty. We can fix that. Place the air filter. I've covered the hole with some duct tape. We'll fix with duct tape, suit might be able to help me. We're all good, we're done here. Okay. Putting this in here, somehow this can neutralize the gas. And then we're gonna do overnight. Literally the thing we do with the, the uh, giant spiders. Okay. Alright. Let's finish off the house. It's just hanging there. I guess it just wants to hang around. Close the back door. Lock it. Towels. Put the towel into the door, blocking the gap beneath it. Theoretically, I don't think you have to lock these. I don't see how, like, gas... Well, no. I feel like gas could actually theoretically push open a door if there's... Depends on the gas from like circumstances and things like that. Whatever, just lock the doors. Get this one done. And I think that's all I can do. I probably have to end the day and then they'll probably ask me like, Oh, do you want to equip this? Check one thing. Let's check the density. One point. If the density is higher than 1.61, I should stay on the upper floor. Otherwise, I should stay on the ground floor. And it says the density is 1.62, so we are going to the upper floor. Okay, end of day. The evening sky darkened when the toxic cloud of deadly gas arrived. You found a hiding place in an abandoned farmhouse. An automated sprinkler system kicked in as the cloud was getting near. Despite being old and faulty, the sprinklers worked perfectly, fully really covering the air above the fields with a dense mist. The water acted as a natural wall, stopping 16% of the gas. There was a strong neutralizer mixed with the water, and it seemed to be working. The neutralizing solution stopped 24% of the initial cloud. The front door was closed, and the crack on it was covered with a towel. Stopping 8% of the cloud. The back door was closed and the crack under it was covered with a towel. Stopping 8% of the cloud. The window on the ground and the floor was covered with plastic wrap. The foil was attached to the frame with a lot of duct tape. The window stopped 8%. 8%. 8%. To the gases inside. 20% of the initial cloud penetrated the high out. You see it in the upper floor. The gas was heavier than the air so some of it didn't affect you. But we didn't even need the hazmat suit. That was amazing. By spraying chemicals, air tightening the windows, and staying on the right floor, you completely avoided all the toxic clouds. You didn't have to wear the hazmat suit. You went to bed early and had a well-deserved rest, allowing you to regain some strength. Take a Kate, what did I tell you about crashing? Alright, what's day two gonna be? What's what's a different day two? Uh light? It's so bright Is it the Ark of the Covenant? <laughs> what was that, the attic? One right there, well easy, nice landing. Do 
Do I know you? What? N no, I mean. Okay, this is awkward. Yeah. Maybe we were on the same train or a bus one time. Back in the old days. Or something like that. It was something else. Anyway. You think you can help me with something, David? No. Today's dream. So I had another dream. I was still here in the house and all of a sudden there was a heat surge. It got so hot it killed me on the spot. I think this might happen tonight. I must sound like a lunatic. I know, but trust me, I know I'm right. We're gonna find out yourselves if you're right. Cody. Go away, I saw this place first! I'm warning you, I know how to fight! Calm down, we're not here to hurt you. Yeah, this man over here is pretty harmless. Alright, okay, whatever, I'm not afraid of you. My name is David and this is Kate. You can calm down, Cody. We're friends. Hey, you know my name? I... I don't know. It just came to me. Stay away. I don't know you. I think. Go where else? Ooh, portable air conditioner. Sweet. It's hot, isn't it? Yes, it's really hot. I'm melting. Is there any, like, lake nearby or maybe a pool? Yeah, a pool would be amazing. Can we look for one? I don't think we have time for that. But it's so hot, I sh I'm sure I could swim the pool faster than you. I give up. I won't even try. Congratulations. Yay, I won. I'm Barry. It's about my wife. She- she didn't make it. Last night she died. Why God, why her? It should've been me. It should've been me. She's still around in the house. I don't know what to do. Come on, David, let's go. This guy's had enough. Wait, Barry, have we met before? I don't... Wait, I... Did I meet you at the gas station before the world ended or something? What's going on, Kate? Why do I keep feeling like I've been here before? Dreams, maybe? No, I mean yes, but there's more to it. Well, whoever you are, what do you want? Hmm, seeing Russell's side of the fan like a bunch of loose screws or something. I think it's broken. It's getting real hot. Yeah, I'm all sweaty. I can tell. I've always handled high temperatures poorly. Are you sure it's gonna get worse? Temperatures usually drops in the evening. Not this time. The worst heat will be just after the sunset. That's not normal. Never is the sinking moon. Nothing here is Barry. Looks like the trip didn't end well. I wonder what happened. My guess is our car broke down. Aubrey's not the best suit for off road travel, you know. And they set camp and then. Toxic cloud got him. The victim of the deadly gas. We should take the extension cord into the cave. It's at least seven feet deep. I don't really want to jump in there. Fix the fan. I'm gonna attach the hook. Try to rope the hook. I could use this to get the rope down the cave. I need to put in the crack in the rocks above the cave. I've inserted the hook into the crack. It sits there firmly. It should be safe to use the rope. You should cover the cave's hole in the thermal blanket secure in place using some kind of dirt and rocks. It's gonna do some time. They should isolate the temperatures between the cave and the outside a bit. I stored the RV's engine. Brr, it's really cold down here. Nice cave. So we can plug in. Before I plug in, I should install by the cave's opening. Okay. Plug it in. 
Now we have an AC. I guess a fan too, why not? <laughs> this is so weird, but also comfy at the same time. Everyone take some water. Huh, did someone call me? But what about you, Barry? I'll be fine. Dang, Barry. I'm trying to be all... Take this water. Wow, thanks, I'm really thirsty. You better save it for later when the weather gets really, really hot. Oh, okay. Here, have some water. Huh, alright, I'm not really thirsty, though. Save it for later, for dehydration. I know, thanks. Take some water. For the heat, it should help with dehydration. Okay, it's getting really hot already. Yeah, and it's only gonna get worse. Thanks. After I dent the towel and hits became really cold. I think this thing really absorbs heat. Do this. Water. The desert usually gets cold in the evening, not this time. The heat stretch was incredibly strong as a wave of boiling hot air moved through the land. You found shelter in a cave underground, hoping it would save you from the deadly heat. The cave's entrance was covered with a thermal blanket, putting on a lot of heat. The cave proved to be a good shelter, as it shielded 35% of the initial heat wave. A portable air conditioner was placed in the cave, with its pipes stretching above the ground. The cool air from the air conditioner dispersed about 26% of the initial heat wave. You plugged in an electric fan in the cave. The air circulation helped lower the temperature, deducting 24% of the initial heat surge. You placed three heat absorbers in the cave's floor. The heat absorbing power of these weird tiles got rid of 21% of the hot air. They had like overkilled it. It wasn't as bad as you thought it would be. Conditions outside were harsh, but in your hideout, everything was absolutely fine. You didn't even sweat much. You were able to rest much more comfortably than you thought you would. Stairs. This is new. Who? Barry's wife? This is from, uh, not Don't Escape, but the, uh, the Sleep Games. The one that Cody's from. Right? Looks kind of similar. Maggie. Hello, dear. What? Wait, you're... I must be dreaming. Indeed you are, my dear. Who are you? I know you. I buried you. You're Barry's wife. Yes, you did bury me, honey. I'm quite grateful for that. Um, no problem. Dream. It's a dream? Yes, darling. It's quite obvious once you look around and think for a second. You've been here before, but your memory is failing you. It's from dream traveling. You've got to watch out as you do it. It can lead to dementia. I don't understand. I hope you will, because a lot depends on it. About Barry. Barry's your husband. Yes, darling. And for some reason, you're in my dream. Well, not personally. I'm dead, remember? I'm just an echo of Barry's memory of me. Why are you here? I'm here because you let Barry die, honey. Oh! What? No! That's impossible. He's fine. Oh, maybe now he is fine. But he didn't survive your previous life. Previous life. You've been here before. Deep inside you know it's true. Tell me the future. What's gonna happen? Can you tell me? You care for your friends, darling. You're a good man. And I don't want that boy to get hurt either. But if you try, you could save my husband too. Just don't let him go there. Go where? 
The sand tomb. Don't let him go there. Tell him to wait. Oh dear. I think our timing has run out. They found you. Oh crap, it's them. Who? What is that? Run, David. Don't let Sphinx touch you. And please warn Barry. Also, tell him I love him. And that it wasn't his fault. Yep, going down the stairs. I'm taking my chances with the scary windows. Not so bad. What? So yeah, never bad dream. Yeah, not a very pleasant one. There were these people, thugs, bandits. They raided our hideout. They had guns. They wanted to kill us. So we'll have to defend ourselves. What is it, Cody? You seem excited. I have something important to tell you. It's like super duper important. We have to prepare for tonight, even more than yesterday. Yes, Cody, I know. But it, you don't know why yet. I don't? I thought... Zombies. Maggie loved you. Huh? Of course you did. And I loved her. But why on earth would you bring that up now? Just... I don't know. I... I don't think she blames you for anything that happened. I don't want to talk about it, David. We have things to do. Stay behind and wait for us. Hey, Barry. Yeah? When we travel to Sidereal Plexus, could you stay and wait for us? Why? Don't you think it's dangerous to separate like this? Yeah, usually it is. I just have a bad feeling about this one. Can you trust me on that? Just wait for us. I have no idea why you're doing this, but okay. When we get there, I'll just stay behind and wait. Thanks, Barry. No problem. Just be careful out there, okay? Oh boy, here we go. There's some berries now with us. It's a lot more simpler. How you doing, Cody? Feeling nice and relaxed and safe? That was uneventful. Wow, did you see that? This hole's like bottomless. I was so scared, but you saved me. You were actually very brave, and you do the same for me. So, what now? We're lucky nobody fell there. Like a certain number playthrough. It looks really deep. Yeah, lucky us. It seems you have to go on without me for now. By the location of that base. Look for documents or a map of some sort. We'll just meet up later. Good luck. I've unlocked it. It's good to see you two back. Kate told me what happened. If you hadn't warned me to stay. How do you know? Dreams? Yes. Dreams. There might still be something worth checking out in that building. I think it's safe to go together now, Barry. If you say it's important. But first, Kate. See if those fucks follow us there? No, they camp out with the ship. We have to deal with them first. We have to stay one more night. You realize you're putting your lives at risk. They have guns. We can't lead them to that ship. Not today. Andy is for today. The best defense is a good offense. What? Don't wet me. If we want to have any chance, we need to go to their camp and do as much as possible to stop them. A little sabotage won't hurt. Actually, maybe it will. It will hurt them. That's the point. Just make sure we don't get spotted. We wouldn't stand a chance in an open fight like that. What is it, Cody? You said there are bandits. Can we just talk to them? They're bad people, Cody. They won't listen. I chatted with you yesterday, even though you could have been evil. I wish it was that simple. Maybe with some... some maybe with some of them? Cody. What are you worried about tonight? A little. I mean, we are clearly outnumbered. They probably know how to use weapons. I'm quite good with those as well. At least one of us is. It won't be enough to defend our hideout. We need to do our best fortifying this place. Okay, everyone's here. Let's get them to move this. You can't move this pipe. Hey, Barry, could you help me with something? What is it? This pipe over there is blocking the way, but it's too heavy for me to push. Sure, 
Let's try to give her. Thanks, Barry. You're welcome. Yeah, it's just a room. There is some papers in there, though. Memory boost. I have a strange feeling of deja vu. Like, it's really important for some reason. Phase control. Memory boost. Okay. New papers. All necessary preparations have been completed. We are ready to start the procedure. According to calculations, the chances of success are at about 89%. As I mentioned in our last conversation, with current conditions, I will not be able to get better results. And I think this is a risk we must take. At the moment, we do not have much information about the crystals, and we're in possession of a very small amount. We need more if we want our expeditions to continue. Even if an attempt to synthesize more could end up a disaster. This is more important than the existence of one world. Even in the event of failure, we will gain a huge amount of information that will allow us to increase the safety of the procedure in the future. SP-228 is expendable. The level of development leaves us much to be desired. It's also one of the least profitable facilities. According to the instructions from the director of SP-4, we should merely evacuate. Miss Stanford has a list of employees who should be informed about the evacuation if it is an actual necessity. While you were traveling past the gas station, you saw some movement around the area from a distance. Do you want to investigate? What's your problem, man? Stop. You hear that, guys? Yeah, somebody's talking. It's not a good plan, that's my problem. Shh. We won't catch much from here. We could sneak to the shop and listen from there. there. I'm pretty sure they would've heard the truck coming up. And that's why I'm not sure if that's a good idea. You're a coward and a fart in our cassage. We need his supplies, so we're gonna take him. And the grip is totally dope. Amazing defensive spot for us to use. My point exactly. It's gonna be a good defensive spot for us. It is gonna be a good defensive spot for them. Don't crack me up. We've been watching for some time now. It's just two dudes, a chick, and a freaking brat. One traveling family plus a blazed uncle. And there's freaking 20 of us, including your army boy scouts. Yeah, I guess you're right. Damn right I am. I want your men to be ready at dusk. I've welcomed you and the gang. It's time to start paying off, Sarge. Yeah. Alrighty, we're heading back to the construction site. Tell the boys a plan. Hmm. I think I know what construction site he's talking about. You've seen one back in the helicopter. I'll mark on your map. Maybe we'll pay them a visit later. You coming? Yeah, I'll just finish getting that fuel and taking a look at the gas station shop. Okay, catch you later. Yeah, later. Enjoy. Right, you guys stay here. I might need your help in case there's trouble. I'll be knowing what you're doing. Give it one good reason not to unload that whole clip into your face. Give me a magazine! That would be a damn good reason. Could have killed you. I think that's the aim on you. I want to negotiate. I've come to bargain. I want to negotiate peace before a war breaks out between our groups. A war. Listen, son, I don't know what world you live in. It's not gonna be a war. It's gonna be a massacre. You have nothing to give us that we can't take by force. Well, can you prove me wrong? I'm listening. Are you a sergeant? If there were few called you Sarge, are you really a sergeant? Huh. I used to be. Sarge of first class, to be specific. But it doesn't matter anymore. It's in the past. My nickname is all I have in that life. Your squad. That kind of bike mentioned something about your men. Is it your squad? Jesus, you've been listening to all that. Yeah, it's my squad, all right. But what's left of it? Four men. They still take orders from me, even if we're not soldiers anymore. Who's the motorbike guy? 
They call him Razor. He's the leader of the gang. And technically my boss. Also a guy that will most likely kill you. I would avoid him at all costs if I were you. Why do you work for Razor? Are you kidding me? Because I had a choice. We were alone. Me and what was left of my squad. There was no more army. No HQ. No government. We had nowhere to go. No supplies. No food. No shelter. Razor took us in. In exchange for our muscles. Even if I'm not proud of it. So, that's all for now, I think. For now. Are we shooting each other next? I was hoping that could be avoided. Just go away and I'll pretend I haven't seen you, okay? Need a hand? Need some help? No. Come on, you'll never open this valve with your bare hands. I thought you guys didn't have a wrench. It'd be like one of the number one things I would carry with me in the post-apocalypse. Won't you even help me? Because I feel it's the right thing to do. Thanks. Help. Got enough fuel? Yeah, thanks for your help, I guess. No problem. I guess this is how it should be. We don't have to fight, you know. There is no need for violence. We can all live in peace. Can we? I'm not sure. You're a soldier. A man of honor. I can't believe someone like you would sign up for a slaughter of innocent people. The times have changed, son. I have changed. Nothing as it used to be. Honor won't feed you. I won't give you a shelter. The times have changed, and so did we to survive. Also, there's a giant Majora moon crashing down. It kind of changes a lot. Act like a soldier? Or no threat to you. This is not how soldiers act. This is not who you are. I told you, I'm no longer a soldier. This is who I am now. Maybe use these other dialogues. Maybe they'll unlock more things. The moon is falling on our heads. Yeah, wow, well, I didn't notice. Maybe I was too busy trying to look after myself and my squad because the damn moon exploded and it's falling on us. What I meant was it's gonna crash in Earth like really soon. Good. Good? It's gonna all end. Has to. So a nightmare. Tell your story, okay? Sure. It's all the same dialogue. Spaceship dialogue. Now let's try talking to you. Here we go, time to rethink your life. The times are not changing. The times are coming to an end. These are the final days. Can't you see? We'll all be over soon. Maybe. We still bother. We're not all putting bullets to our heads. We still fight to survive. Yes, we're still trying to survive. Against all odds. Still, we're most likely all going to die. Our time is running out. And here we are, standing in the wasteland with our hands close to our guns. Preparing to fight like a bunch of idiots. What do you suggest we do, then? You should go. Sarge, take your men and leave. What? Are you kidding? You don't like working for Razor. You don't respect Razor. You don't like him. You only work for him because your squad is counting on you. But this is not the right way. And deep down you know I'm right. Razor won't save you from the end. The question is, what kind of man are you going to be when the end comes? What do you want to see in your eyes of your squad? You're right. There's no point in denying it. I'll talk to my squad. We'll change our ways while we still can. I guess this is goodbye then. I'll take my squad and leave right before dusk. Make no mistake, Razor will still try to get you. So you'll have to deal with the rest of his men. How many people will he have? Without us, he's down to 15. So that's a hell of a lot more than you have. Good luck, son. You'll need it. Hey, Sarge. Thanks. Good luck out there in the wasteland. That job is done.
about Sarge. Maybe there is a happy ending after all. Maybe there is, who knows. About Sarge. That went better than I expected. He seemed reasonable. He won't do us any harm. Even if we have to deal with the rest, it's still a few saved lives. For now. What happens next doesn't depend on us. We did all we could. But Sarge. So the Sarge... I knew he wasn't a villain. You were right, Cody. He wasn't a villain. Just like last time, he was a good guy. What do you mean, last time? The last time we met him. Cody, we've never met him. Wait, I'm confused. Uh, me too. Thinking about makes me dizzy. <laughs> Oil. Rat poison. Okay, we've got the ammo in there. Ooh-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo. I like. What terrible stink. Thank you. Oh, I thought I stepped in it. Animal carcass. It's crawling with maggots. I think I'm gonna throw up. Aw, oh, should I hold your hand? God damn it, Kate, this is sickening. I agree with David. This smells revolting. Yuck, it smells like, I don't know, worse than anything. Alright, it stinks like hell. I'll give you that. Remove the corpse. Now I smell no better than a dead boar. It's too heavy. I have to put something down. Let me take this to the construction site. Ooh, they got a sentry right there. Any thoughts, Kate? We gotta be really careful. But he seems to be swarming with those guys. I could sneak through there. Maybe they won't notice me. Guys, you better stay here. Are you sure this is a good idea? No, but it might work. Maybe there's a back door somewhere there. Alright. Even if you sneak past the guards. Maybe you find a way in. What exactly do you tend to do? You're not exactly special task forces type. I'm just gonna look around. Maybe I'll find something useful. Don't get yourself shot. See, she does care about you after all. Shut up. Please be careful, okay? I promise I'll be back soon. Hey, buddy. This dude looks dangerous. Corpse. There's some disgusting maggots in the rotting corpse. Weird. The maggot could be used to distract the guard, but not directly. Maggots don't randomly fall from the sky. It would just make him more alert, if anything. <laughs> okay. Fence shelf. Go. All right, ammo here. Boxes full of ammunition. Labels say property of the United States government. Keep dry. The boxes contain a lot of different kinds of bullets. Both are far too heavy, clunky to move. I put a lot of oil into the box. At least some of the bullets should fail when fired. I've taken some food. We got down that food or something, right? I hope some of those thugs have weak heads. Just push us over and crush everybody. Go. Whew. It's close. Let's try something. Upgrading a rifle, scope to become more accurate, and shoot more efficiently. Let's become upgrading a rifle. Now let's do it. That's revenge! Now I'm done here. Put 
trapped down. They seem pretty obvious, but it's whatever, I guess. Alright. Can I give you a gun, buddy? Load it. Take this. A gun. You know how to use it? Yeah, it's just... I'd rather not have to use it. I know, me neither. But sometimes life doesn't leave you any other option. Thanks, David. I'll use it if everything else fails. Okay. I think we're done. Equip the rifle. 20 raiders. A group of raiders commanded by men named Razor right by dusk. They weren't trying to hide, circling your hideout with their bikes. Engines roaring, angry voices screaming. Shouldn't it be less than that? Whatever. The time is for slaughter has come, piglets. Raise himself down through a megaphone. And I will be your wolf. Just walk away. Just go walk away. Some of his gang was missing. Two folks found a fine ball of whiskey in their supplies. How could you see no opportunity like that? They were too drunk to move out and were left to sober up. They missed the whole party. When they found a guard shot in the head, they had no idea who had done it. Heh <laughs> You had simply meant there was one fewer fug to worry about. When the bandits moved out from their base, a small group split from them and went in the opposite direction. Sarge wasn't brave enough to confront Razor, but he fought things through sufficiently, and his foreman never showed up to attack you. Twelve men including Razor closed in to attack. The attackers opened fire. Bullets swished through the air flew far too close to your head, decorating the walls of the house with numerous small holes. Some of the guns didn't spit out any deadly projectiles, but try click they refused to work properly, with some metal of their ammo supply. Three of the attackers found themselves unarmed and had to retreat before the attack had even truly started. Sitting on the roof, armed with a sniper rifle, you fired at the attackers. With a view enhanced by scope, you managed to hit five of them. Ooh, nice, David. Same to the dusty dirt. They didn't get up afterwards. Keeping some extra ammo near was a good idea, if it was accidental. With that extra ammo, you managed to shoot one more thug as he was nearing the house. Bear traps? Yeah! For dusk, you placed some traps around your house. Out of four traps set, two caught Razor's men. Heard and unable to proceed, they retreat, happy to be alive. He closed and locked the front door. He closed and locked the back door. He put solid metal bars in the ground floor window. One remaining attacker, Razor himself, was trying to force his way into your hideout. Kate simply opened the door and put her gun to his head. You managed to repel the attackers before they even got into your house. That was a terrifying performance on your side. Who would have thought you're such an efficient killer? You prepared your hideout perfectly, and it paid off. Not only did you survive, but you also had a good rest last night. Love the smell of dead bandits in the morning. This is just to be the moon. The Super Moon! Where is everybody? I check this floor first. Oh, hello, Razor! Kate, what are you doing? What needs to be done? We agreed to let him live. No, we agreed to decide his fate in the morning. It's the morning now, and I'm deciding his fate for you. Because I know you couldn't do it. There's no reasoning for now, David. Shut up, Barry! You know there's no other way this can end. Kate, please stop. David, take him outside. Now, if the moon wasn't crashing down, I would honestly... You would probably kill him. He's honestly just gonna come back with the remaining men and try to get revenge. But, since the moon is not coming down... The moon is, in fact, coming down, rather. Um... And we have to set a good example for Cody. We can spare him, because he's just going to get crushed anyways. Wait. Don't do it. Give me one good reason. I'll help you, I... Shut up. Wasn't asking you. Waste of a bullet. So in this lesson, you're better than this. 
The world ends anyway. It's over anyway. Huh? The world is going to end today. So what? The scum doesn't deserve to witness it. Wait, what? You're for real? We've been guarding him for the entire night, taking turns. And that was the last night of my life. Thanks, David. We should have killed him right away. It's a waste of a bullet, Kate. It's a waste of a bullet. We might need, might need to defend ourselves. Huh. I could still just smack his head with a pipe until his brain <laughs> comes out. Damn you, David. You're too soft. Oh, I'm not going to regret that. Thank you. Just let me go. You'll never see me again. Shut up. You're doing the right thing. You shut up, too. Everybody, just shut up. I'll be letting him go. It won't try to be a bad mistake. That was the right thing to do. I'll ask you to say that again if he follows us and stabs our backs when we least expect it. I doubt he would. So, it is today. Is it? Yes, I've seen it. This time there's no way to survive this. This is a new Barry dialogue we just see because he didn't make it last time. How should I feel? My wife is dead. I've had the worst night of my life and the world is about to end. Hang in there. Things are going to get better. I don't know, David. This whole thing about this spaceship. It's too good to be true. Not to mention I'm terrified of flying. I take trains. Don't worry. You'll see I'm not bluffing. About letting Razor go. Do not talk to me about that. You convinced me, I already regret that. Why? Because I showed weakness. Because I looked like some sort of wimp. No offense. Kate, this man has lost all of his friends. He lost everything. Which makes him super dangerous. As he has nothing left to lose now. What if he decides to come back? I doubt that. If I were him, I would totally come back and have my revenge. Yes, you probably would. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? About Razor. You did the right thing, David. There was enough bloodshed. No reason to take another life. We did what we had to do to defend ourselves, and that's enough. What if he decides to get back to us? I'm not sure he has time for revenge. Don't you think? I guess. About Kate. What do you think about all this and Kate? She has her flaws, like all of us. I had my doubts in the beginning. But she has many opportunities to ditch us. Maybe it's because she needs some help to achieve her goals. But Maggie always said that I should give others at least some benefit of the doubt. And okay, I trust her. Kind of, at least. I don't think she would harm us anyway. But don't get me wrong, I'm still sure she wouldn't cry after losing any of us. <laughs> That's true. What do you think Cody's doing? Remarkably well, given the circumstances. I'd say he's an incredibly resilient kid. You might think that he's just a silly child, but to tell you the truth, I think he keeps us all alive. Positive attitude. Confidence that he will see another day. Hope for a better future. I'm not sure I would be able to go forward without it. I need that boost. You might even call it a solid kick in the ass. I can kick someone in the ass. Language, young boy. Sorry, I mean kick in the butt. You better be careful or I'll give you a noogie. Think about your wife? All the time. Today's the last day of the world. Just, just listen to this. The end of the world is today. I can't believe it. I can't comprehend it. It's not something I expected, nor wanted to witness. If we're lucky, we're going to witness it from above. Yeah, if we're lucky. You don't believe we can make it, do you? It doesn't matter, even if we do. The end of the world means it's the end of the world. So I don't believe we can ex escape our fate. But you can be sure as hell I'll do everything to help you get where you want to go. So you can still count on me. Thanks, Barry. Oh, hey! They're trying to bury them. Can't believe we killed them all. There's a pair of gloves in the bag. So this one, the air is missing now. Air composition missing. Fuel mixture, cal fuel callus, all present. Air supply lowered, considering using air saving pills. And air composition control. Pretty much the same thing. Huh. Nothing's broken this time. Interesting. Circuit boards are fine. Filter slot. 
missing. There's a glue gun. Large Ronsant's labeled auxiliary air tanks are empty. Engine caliber, everything seems to be fine here. Dangerous looking crack. How big is it? I don't know, palm sized? No idea how deep it runs. Maybe it's just a surface. If we think deeper like that, we might be in trouble. Best case scenario, we will lose oxygen. In the worst case, we explode during the ascent. Oh. Now we probably need air tanks, which is box two. Barry cuts the time down a lot, although you really need much time for this level. Let's see, experimental medicine that increases lung efficiency. Side effects include itching and occasional rashes. Well, looks like we're gonna be stuck with some rashes. Okay, straightforward. It's pretty much almost the same run, just things basically subbed out. Okay. Mix it finished, it's work, let's see. I put some power in the pill casings. Is that enough? You seem to be very happy with yourself. What did you do? I think those pills will increase lung efficiency. You think? Are you really gonna digest an unknown, probably untested chemical? Not just me. You should do it too. Yeah, alright. Don't forget to share those pills then. Anvil pills. I guess it just covers all of us. I create special pills. Let me guess. You want me to take one? Yes. Normally if someone would tell me to take a pill, that's going to help me get to the moon. Yeah, I know. Just make sure it's swallowed right before we launch, okay? Sure thing. Hey Cody, here, take this. What's that? Medicine. I'm not feeling sick. I know, but this will help you breathe in the spaceship. Will I be able to breathe in space? No, not really. Just keep these this pill and swallow it right before we launch. Okay. Hey, so before I forget, here, take one right before we lift off. Huh, what? Take one before we lift off. You sound like a drug dealer using some weird slang. Huh. Alright, we're done here. There's a filter we need. Okay, let us weld up this stuff here. Need some material to weld. Do you want to weld the alloy plate to the wall and fix a crack surface? A crack covered metal alloy welded to the wall. Hope this will do. Round openings. Installed air tanks. Everything seems to be fine here. And let's put the filter in. Are we ready to launch? I made some calculations. We barely have enough fuel to get to our destination. We have to limit our weight. And you seem to be carrying a lot of stuff with you. Okay. That should be it. We should just need to drop some stuff. Alright, let's do this. We're ready to launch? Ready when you are, David. Use the pills. The world was ending. The moon cracked into pieces was moving rapidly towards the planet. Both celestial bodies pulling each other apart. All systems green. Well, some systems were green. You didn't have time to check every last nut or seal like people did before launching rockets in the old days. Get the duty for heads and on. Engine is ready, initiating launch procedure. Bring safety protocols, manual controls engaged. The hatch was open, leaving you a clear way towards the sky. I would hope the hatch is open. Five, four, three, two. Buckle up, it's gonna be one hell of a ride. One, zero. 
The acceleration force pushed you hard into your seat, squeezing all the air from your lungs. The rocket began its ascent. I looked back to see Cody and Barry, how you doing, Barry, in their seats. It was truly a miracle to have them both here. A faint memory from another life echoed in your head. The ship climbed through the sky fast and without much trouble. Razor traveled alone, bruised and hurt. Hearing a loud war in the sky, he turned around and gazed up. He suddenly watched you soar, clutching his jaw as hard as he was clenching his fists. Sucker! Looking around the wasteland, he said this place was as good as any other. He sat down and waited, looking at your ships going up and the moon going down. Sarge's men were standing on top of a hill. He traveled far west since you had last seen him. The whole squad raised their heads and gazed into the sky, tracing the bright light of your rocket. Would you look at that? Smirked Sarge, slowly shaking his head. That kid actually did it. Good luck with whatever you find there, he added, before he turned away. The whole squad decided to open the last ball of whiskey and drink it as the world around them started falling apart. While the vessel was smoothly getting altitude, you grew worried about the life support. Because the default thing had been corrupted, you were forced to create air comp composition yourself. The composition was perfect. The air reserves would sustain you for a long time. You inserted a first lithium hydros hydroxide filter into the ship's ventilation. It absorbed the carbon dioxide in the air, making it more breathable. You installed reserve air tanks in the shuttle. When the irregular air ran low, the reserves kicked in, providing you with more life-saving oxygen. Good thing you know us and fix that crack in the ship's hull. Your repairs saved a lot of air from leaking out. You repaired some pills to temporarily enhance lung efficiency. You took one and it reduced the amount of air you used during the flight. Kate took one pill. As a result, she used less air. Barry took a pill, less air. Cody took a pill, less air. You made it to orbit. And from there, it was surprisingly a short way to the moon. Kate flew the ship towards the lunar base. Here we go. It's endgame. Kate, l don't mess up the landing. Oh, yes, you did it. Never mind. Are we dead? Is this real life? Kato, you're right. One of the best, best landings, never seen any better. Kato, you couldn't be worse, etc., etc. Barry would be the only one with new dialogue. Barry, you hurt. I don't think so. Just some bruises. Try to stand up. We have to move. And Cody, skip for you real quick. Get the suits. Alright, let's go. As I see you here, Barry, welcome to the moon. Last time we were here, it kind of sucked. Let's do this puzzle again. There we go. All right, I think it's it to remove the suits. Great, because I'm almost out of oxygen. Okay, so what now? Let's look around. Hey. About this place. What do you think of this place? It feels like I'm in a dream. You are, technically, kind of. Maybe, no. Maybe we are. It surely is. Of a worldly in here. Get the card. Diagnostic screen. Okay, no discs in the drives. We have both. Thankfully. Let's go to the right room. Oh crap, here we go. Moon start falling apart. Keep yourself together, Moon. There we go. Base control computer. Do it. Alright, let's get back there. 
We're on time limit here. Emergency mode. Oh no, 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 no. Check that. Maybe it's just a glitch. Still says face can roll to corrupted. Keeps happening. Okay. Insert the face control light. Hope they're gonna make it better. Then memory boost. So the memory boost disc. It will not prevent memory loss, but it will let you car carry over more memories in case of emergency merge. I have a memory of inserting a single disc into this console in the previous life. Maybe now with both discs in place, things are going to be okay. Let's see if she has dialogue about that. I've inserted two special discs into the console. What discs? One was labeled Memory Boost and the other was Face Controller Light. I found them at the Sidereal Plexus office. And I know they're gonna help because I remember using one disc in my previous life. Wait, what? It's you never being here. Vaguely, like a dream. If one disc causes this, two of them might actually boost the system enough for us to... to survive. To end this. To escape. How many loops do you remember? I'm sure about one, but then again, I had prophetic dreams in a previous life, too, so... I guess we've been through a lot. And hopefully this is the last one. Let's do it, then. Get in the pod, Kate. Hey, Barry. Kate? Sorry if I was mean to you. Oh, it's okay. That's how you roll, right? I know you're a good person, Kate. You mean you don't want the world to know. See you around. Bye, big man. Hey, Cody. Um, never change, okay? Okay. See you soon. Good night, Kate. Alright, David, so... Here we are. At the end of the road. Or is it the beginning? I wouldn't have made it if it wasn't for you. Are you gonna get emotional now? Huh. I think I've spent too much time with you. Do you want to wake up? In a bed, in a world where they'd have a moon and lattes. I hope that's what happens. Me too. Bye, David. Until we meet again. Just don't point your gun at me when we do, okay? Can't promise that. They meet again. Drag Cafe. Still points the gun at him. Your turn, Cody. Just get in the damn pod, Shinji. We've been here before. This means she won't help you. Come on. Don't be scared. What will happen? Where will we go? I don't know. But it's gonna be alright. Sleep well, kid. You too, Barry. David? I don't want to be alone again. You won't be. Wherever you, you wake up, I will find you. Promise? Promise. Alright, your turn. I don't like this idea, David. I know what you want to say and I don't like it. To be honest, I have no idea if this does anything or if we're just being delusional. Nothing to lose, right? We came this far. Might as well give it a shot. Want me to go first? Nah, it's okay. You seem to be the one who knows which buttons to press. Plus some kind of, like, outcome is gonna happen. You got to, like, rush to the other room and, like, run back and stuff and, like, almost die. Hey, David? Yeah? You say we can find ourselves anywhere in any world. That's how I understand it. You think? You think I'll see her? Maggie. My wife. I don't know, Barry. But I think there's a chance you will. Say hello to her for me. Sure thing, David. Sure thing. Alright, my turn to run around. Okay. Running power. Let's go back before it all just cracks open and we die. <laughs> Ouch. Go, David, go. Come too far now. 
Get in the pod. Lunar drilling cancelled. Do we go to the other world and tell them like, hey, don't drill into the moon. Adoption permit. Tiger, that's Cody's. Kate. There's David on the computer. Barry got his wife back. Kind of. I don't like how we're looking up. Is the moon coming down again? No. They're like, damn, the moon is not coming down. Don't escape. Four days to survive. So that ending was literally zero escape. That's that's it's the same complete logic of how they like escape the situation. So that's it for Don't Escape Four Days to Survive. And the end of this essentially... I mean, how many games has it been? Like, six other games or something like that? So, an end of a saga that spans, I think, what, almost te over ten years almost? Or close to that? And it still leaves a little room for sequels. Just because that company can be doing all sorts of things. They, they basically can come up with any concept, some zany technology thing happens, and then you have a setting, essentially, if they want to revisit it again. But anyway, well, we can't really comment on the plot too much. It's all spelled out for us, so, you know, it's like, not like there's any, like, deepest lore or anything like that. It's fairly straightforward, how everything's connected, and uh, how they use this dream world and everything, and now we have these super technology. The, the main thing is that we had our happy ending, kind of. I'm hoping that they don't... It depends how you kind of view it. There's a possibility that they essentially steal their bodies from another version of themselves. Going by the, uh, I think, the Deep Sleep series or whatever. So, that's the same way how it works in Zero Escape also. And Zero Escape did have that kind of moral dilemma. They gave you a choice on this. This one, not so much. You're getting the good ending or not. But either way, you know, it's, it's whatever. We survived. Anyway. So, thank you all for watching me play Don't Escape, Four Days of Survive. I'll see you guys later, and take it easy.